In this conversation, let's talk about the effects of sovereign debt default. And we are joined by Dr. Alex Kamau, who is a business consultant and a lecturer at the Cooperative University. Dr. Kamau, good morning. Morning to you, Eric. Karibu sana to Kenya's biggest conversation. Thank you very much for having me. Cooperative College, the university, the one in Karen? Yes, the one in Karen. Uh -huh. What do you teach them? I teach uh, economics, mm -hmm. I teach uh, financial accounting and financial management, taxation as well and uh, investment analysis. Where? God. <laughs> Mambo, man. I have understood nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Counting, I understand. Uh, yes. Taxation? I don't understand very well. Economics? I understand a bit. Uh -huh. But financial? An analysis? Analysis. The that one is counting the money I am paid so that I can work with it. That's for me is financial analysis. <laughs> then looking at what I've spent it on. Yeah, that's, I've that's, analyzed it. That's analyzing. Yes. <laughs> but this financial accounting, I don't understand. I what think is he's wondering, is there another accounting apart from financial? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, there are a, a number of other branches of accounting. Mm. Financial management, financial accounting. There's management accounting. Right. Cost accounting. Why? Why? <laughs> yeah, quite a number. Why? <laughs> Don't worry. You just I think what what uh, doctor is talking about requires a lot of money. <laughs> so I need not worry. <laughs> because I, I, I do not have a lot of money. <laughs> You're not in the bracket. I need, I need no you need, money. You need yeah. management accounting and those things. No, that's all right. No. <laughs> Thank you for teaching those things. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, Dr. Kamau, we have been talking about the state of our economy for a while, and we like having this conversation because it's important for all of us to have various perspectives and look into where we are at. In the end, we all must agree that this is where we are and this is where we need to move. And these are the mistakes that we need not to make and what we need to learn from. Now, we have been talking about the debt in the country. Close to 9 trillion shillings is what is reported by government as our debt burden. And we have to repay a lot of it. Next year, we are going to be to paying close to 2 trillion shillings in <laughs> just debt, right? And then there are those who have been saying, you know, the way things are going, if you look at our revenue collections, if you look at how we keep revising our revenue targets and how we don't even hit those revised revenue targets in the last couple of years and how we are doing, we are headed to some very painful points and we are heading there very fast. Last week we hosted Jimmy Wenjege and he was, he's been telling us about this, look at the papers, look, look at the records that we have. And his parting shot last week was, Probably the thing that we ought to do is actually look at defaulting as a country. If we look at everything that we are facing, maybe we default. Default takes us to that level where we tell people, just like uh, our deputy president says, <coughs> even if you strip us naked and, beat us. <laughs> and you spanked us, we have no money to pay yes. you. Now you say that there are adverse effects of a sovereign debt default. Let's start from there. Yes, that's true, Eric. There are adverse effects of uh, sovereign debt uh, default. Mm. And uh, I will start by saying uh, that uh, it is not easy to default for a country as it is for, a, for an individual. Mm. Because uh, an individual, uh, once uh, you declare that uh, you, you, you are unable to pay your debts, mm. you can uh, access the bankruptcy code that uh, protects you from uh, being sued or being, uh, being, uh, being auctioned for a period of time as you try to reorganize yourself. But uh, for a country, it is quite different. So in the issue, if we default, if we default, for instance, here in Kenya, we are a net importer country. And uh, according to the economic survey report that was uh, released uh, a few weeks ago, it, it, uh, we imported... 2.2 trillion worth of uh, worth of goods and services from uh, from from abroad and what we exported is about uh, 800 billion mm. so that means uh, we had a net import effect of uh, 1.6 trillion and for us to import all that what we need is a uh, foreign currency and for us to have foreign currency we need to to either increase our our exports or we ask for 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 funding from uh, IMF, mm -hmm. from uh, other multilateral uh, lending agencies, which, if we default, 
we will not be able to access those facilities because the, the moment we default, the credit rating agencies, the global credit rate, rating agencies, JP Morgan, we have Fitch, we have Standard & Poor, they will downgrade our, 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 our position. And once we are downgraded, it will be extremely very difficult. To do what? To, to continue importing goods and services that are critical to the survival of us as Kenyans. For instance, uh, in, 20, in 2021, when Sri Lanka defaulted, they were unable even to import fuel. And uh, we could see that uh, the, the entire public uh, sector was affected, even uh, critical uh, uh, vehicles like uh, hospital cars, his hospital vehicles, they were grounded. Why? So, sorry, Dr. Tariq, make yes. the connection for us then yes. directly yes. between a default by a nation yes. and then inability to then be able to import goods. How? Connect the two for us. Uh, I don't have money yes. to pay you your loan. Yes. How does that then stop me yes. from bringing in the things then that we need in the country? Ah, uh, that's a good one. Let me start by saying that uh, as it is right now, we have uh, about uh, 6.5 6 billion US dollars um, as the foreign reserve with the CBK. Okay. And that only represents about uh, 3.5 uh, of the imports that we do in a, in a month. Mm. That is called the uh, uh, import cover. The import cover is uh, 3.5 months. So basically it means that uh, if we if we deplete that import cover that we have, those 6.5 billion US dollars, then we'll be unable to continue importing uh, fuel because uh, fuel... But how would we be depleting? Mm. We, we, deplete, we, de we deplete because uh, we, we, we have two ways of uh, accumulating foreign, uh, foreign currency, foreign reserve, yeah. either by increasing uh, exports. When we are exporting, we, we get foreign currency. Yeah. Or the, the alternative to that is when we have, uh, we, we have uh, loans coming from uh, IMF, coming from World Bank, in, in, form of, uh, in form of dollars, in form of foreign currency. Mm -hmm. And if we default paying the existing loans, then it means that uh, we no other foreign We shut down the tap of money coming in through the lending route. Th through the lending, uh, lending route, yes. But then our export route still remains open. That's, that, that's for sure. But as, as, you, as, you, as you can see from uh, the economic survey report that uh, was released uh, about two weeks ago, mm. the, the exports are not sufficient to, to, to um, um, they are not adequate to, to cover the results. To cover the, to, to cover the to cover our imports because we are importing more by 1.6 trillion mm. so that one actually needs to but well, that can that trade imbalance yes i mean countries have trade imbalances it's not as though kenya is inventing it yes how then do we ensure that we export more than we are exporting that's a very good question. Yes. And uh, the way we can ensure that we export more than we are importing is first of all to make uh, Kenya a conducive environment for businesses to thrive. But uh, as it is right now, be, uh, starting from uh, the issue of uh, cost of electricity, cost of production, and uh, the issue of taxation, because right now we have uh, increased uh, the taxation rate, so that uh, <coughs> we try to to um, to to accumulate and to mobilize and to collect more tax, uh, more taxes, and by doing that, we are also sending a, a very negative signal to prospective uh, foreign investors. But Dr. a weak shilling should yes. make our exports more attractive. Yes, because it means you will be buying it compared to whatever currency you want to convert it on the international market. It will cost them less. Now, the issue of <clears throat> These are the details of how it is the expense that we keep saying is prevalent in Kenya with regards to doing business. That is something that the government, well, it's the only, the government is the only entity that can change that they can. I, I wonder, why don't they? Because it's not as though it hasn't been mentioned. It has been mentioned before. If it is something that would help increase Though the number of people who want to come into the country to invest, and by so investing, bring in more money, and by bringing in more money, make it possible for the circulation of money to also increase. And when that happens, it means there is more for them to tax. So, 
yet the government can do this P yes. there are people like you who work yes. in the ministry of finance yes. and the treasury yes. and they know this yes and then the government yes so why are we not doing it i, I think we have a, a long journey to to, to cover because uh, for instance uh, the cases that uh, the is uh, we are hearing right now from the issue of uh, corruption at kemsa from uh, the issue of uh, these uh, poisonous sugar that uh, is in circulation <laughs> so corruption is a key deterrent to foreign direct investment because uh, when we look at uh, countries like uh, those scandinavian scandinavian countries like um, uh, denmark corruption control there is at 100 percent but uh, when we look at our statistics here in kenya it is at 26 uh, percent so because of uh, bad uh, uh, reputation uh, reputation uh, uh, crisis that we have as a country that makes that makes uh, foreign investors not to freely mm -hmm. come to Kenya because uh, there's what is called uh, investors confidence mm -hmm. And uh, so if, if the government can be able to deal with these corruption cases, like now the issue of Kemsa, we had the, the president uh, was able to suspend uh, key, key, key of, of officials in that department or in that uh, uh, parastatal. But if that does not end, that should not end there. We should see them being taken to court, being mm. prosecuted, and whatever they, it is, uh, if they are confirmed to have stolen, it should be given back to the government. But so that, Terry, yes. if if the land the, the the if global fund who are responsible yes. for the monies that we're talking about had yes. not kicked a fuss yes because they kicked a fuss yes yes okay but after some 800 million shillings had done a little walkabout yes and somehow it wasn't a walkabout for which it was purposed yes, yes. now what about other monies like say our own money which the government collects mm. through KRA yes. and there's no global fund to kick a fuss about mm -hmm. and that is what we see happening on a daily basis. So the picture that gets painted is that we're in this vicious cycle that will never end. Yeah, that's for sure that's for sure Bec because uh, we we have seen i think the culture that we have here in kenya for instance if i take you in 2013 the issue of a uh, chicken gate scandal mm. where there was uh, d during the procurement of uh, el uh, election election materials yeah. the bvr yeah. and uh, the other the, the other equipment we a scandal uh, came up and those who had inst who because the, the kenya as a as a as a country that was procuring those items from uh, europe in the process there was uh, that corruption issue and the people who who who, who had in, who, who who are partners with kenya mm. in uk they were actually prosecuted and jailed but here in kenya nothing happened so it is the issue of corruption that uh, in those developed economies we hear whenever there is a scandal they are willing even to step aside and to uh, be investigated that that is not corruption yes corruption is a manifestation of impunity yes the reason why somebody can commit some that is wrong and they're still as we say in Kiswali, Kangumu, mm. is because they know nothing will happen that's impunity because if something started happening yes we would see less and less of these things that's for sure but they sure. know that's nothing sure. they, it's sure. like there's a certainty mm. that nothing mm. will happen no, nothing is going to happen mm. yes mm. that's for sure that's for sure look you're saying yes that if kenya yes defaulted that is there's some loan that's due to be paid at a certain time mm. We owe the largest amount of money that we owe is to China, yes. right? And then yes. to the other bilaterals and multilaterals, mm. multilaterals, and of course, yes. the market through Eurobond. If that money was due at a certain point and we don't pay, yes. that is default. Mm, right? That's default. So we, once we defaulted, you say it's not a good thing for us if we got there yes because we get downgraded yes. we become pariahs mm. we cannot borrow from the market yes but can we borrow from imf we cannot borrow from imf unless uh, we meet the conditions that uh, imf uh, would put for us mm -hmm. for, for for instance uh, the imf uh, even as we speak uh, it is uh, it is um, it is IMF that is pushing for structural adjustments here in Kenya. Mm. The issue of introduction of VAT on fuel, it was uh, about IMF. The issue of uh, privatization, 
uh, of uh, state owned uh, enterprises yeah. it is imf mm. and uh, the imf for instance uh, the case uh, for ghana recently imf said that, said for us to come to your rescue you also need to do uh, debt restructuring yeah. and debt restructuring actually how it happened uh, in Ghana even the local investors who had invested with the Ga Ghana uh, uh, with the Ghana government in terms of uh, buying treasury bonds they were told uh, they will be subject they will be subjected to um to to some sort of pain mm. that uh, the interest payable on the interest payable to them for the treasury board they have invested with the government would be suspended for three years yeah. for the first one year they will be paid zero interest yeah for the second year they will be paid about five percent mm. and the third year that's when now the institution will start to normalize mm. and we also the issue of uh, the the face value of the of the amount that they had given borrowed they had uh, given to the government for instance uh, if you had invested with the government uh, a bond of a hundred thousand then the ghana the ghana government was told by imf that uh, you need to reduce the principal amount by that percent mm. so every other person was getting a haircut yeah so the IMF would put some conditions to be met before they come in. They okay. say we are the international lenders. Mm. But, and, and, and uh, let, let me say this, that uh, it is not the first time that uh, African countries uh, have been uh, awarded debt relief. Mm. And debt relief is, uh, is proving to be unsustainable strategy for the governments to manage why uh, do their even, Why do they then call it even debt relief? Because there's no relief really. So, I mean, here we are, and you, uh, the word that you used, which I circled here, was rescue. Yes. That if the INF and other IMF and other financial global institutions yes. come and offer you, um, you know, something a as a nation, package. Yes. rescue package, yes. it comes with certain conditionalities and things that you must do, which, my, in my opinion, yes really then serve as ways for countries to be perennially financially subservient to them it never really rescues you it doesn't get you out of trouble what happens is that you get the loan you pay it for some time but then after some time you're going to need a little bit more and you're going to keep taking more and then you're going to actually pander to the whims of this institution that can hold this thing over your head so the question is yes is this really a sustainable way of getting a nation any nation out of trouble and should that be the first option because you say well you know there's always somebody we can borrow from yes you can mm -hmm. but then you will forever be in their debt no pun intended i, th I think it's a it's a good thing that uh, imf is doing but because uh, when we are giving aid it's good also not to treat the symptoms but to treat the cause for instance, uh, in 2005, most most uh, African countries that uh, were suffering uh, um, had that, that had um, high debt actually were, were those debts were forgiven through an in, an initiative that was called the High IPC. Mm -hmm. that, that is highly indebted. Uh, poor countries mm. in Africa, mm -hmm. and once they were their debts were forgiven, including Ghana and Zambia, to uh, a few years down the line, were we forgiven as Kenyans? No, as we as we were not, <laughs> we were not in the category. <laughs> yes, we were not. We were, we were, as we were, you we are not in that category. So what the IMF does is mm. to say, apart from just giving you the aids, you need to to do something to do fiscal consolidation. You need to to see some fiscal discipline uh, yep. coming for, from your side, mm. and fiscal discipline uh, comes in two in two ways because uh, we have fiscal policies and we have monetary policies the fiscal policy is about the national government the national government is asked to raise more taxes and also to cut down cut on its spending expense. yes mm -mm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's why is it that the imf or world bank talk about everything rather than what they ought to be talking about because all these things it's mumbo jumbo economics and financial talk Yet we know the reason why we have these problems is because every time we have a budget in this country for any development, whether at the county level or the national government, corruption is budgeted in it. So everything costs infinitely more than it should cost. Just for starters. So can I ask that and ask a mm. question? Mm. If we're able to do an audit, yes. which I'm sure somebody in these financial circles has actually done, and maybe yes. that information has not come public, yes. the nations that have gone close or teetering on the precipice of default has only natural occurrences happened to cause this or has there been direct manipulation 
like corruption, for example, whereby then you're not able to meet your debt obligation. Has the money that has been borrowed for development only ever gone to development? Has the money that, you know, there's not enough money to go around, you yes, know, yes. and we've done everything that we're supposed to do, yes. but it's just, you know, life has happened yes. and it's just not enough. Or has the hand of corruption played all these people who are teetering on the corner of this debt default? Can you see that there is something avoidable that happened to bring these nations to this issue? Yes, the, if, if I can mention the issue of corruption, like uh, the former president said that we lose two billion in a day. So that's about 700 billion in a, in a year. That's a lot of money uh, compared to our revenue collection in a year, almost uh, more than a third. So if uh, that money is uh, properly taken care of, then we wouldn't need to even continue to borrow. So the, the, issue, the issue of corruption is a, is a, big, is a big thing. It's the thing, isn't it? Yes, the, the issue of corruption is, uh, is, 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 the, is the main thing. Well, is it a common thread as well? If you look yeah, at those other countries, yeah. say Zambia, Sri Lanka, Argentina, and all the other countries that have gotten to that level of default, yes. has corruption been mentioned as a cause? Cor corruption, corruption has been mentioned. But uh, if uh, Eric, you can uh, allow me also to talk about uh, how, we, how we acquire debt. Mm. Mm. For instance, uh, the two billion US dollar uh, dollars loan that we acquired in 2014 you that talk, is you're talking about the euro bond the euro bond the euro mm -hmm. bond the one which never came to kenya the one that uh, is very controversial <laughs> uh, that is we are supposed to repay <laughs> that we are supposed to repay by next year yeah because it was a 10 year it was a 10 year bond mm. so that bond actually because it was an infrastructural bond we needed to do the sgr mm. the, t the the maturity for that bond should not have been 10 years it should it should, it should have been for instance 30 years mm. because uh, 10 years is a very short time mm. period for to to pay back such an amount such an amount such an amount it very expensive so so the f we got it wrong from the word go mm. that loan should that euro bond should be uh, should should it have, had have been a, euro a longer bond repayment period mm. then there is a euro bo euro bond is a very unique uh, loan not like the loan that uh, you and i go to get uh, from financial institutions because a uh, euro bond you on a on a yearly basis you only pay the interest and uh, you pay the principal amount at the at the at the, at, at the end so what uh, what kenya should be doing is uh, to to have a, a sinking fund that uh, every year Every year, because we know at, uh, after 10 years, we'll have to pay a 2 billion uh, US dollar loan. Every year, we, we, we set aside a 10% of that uh, principal amount. Another year, we set 10%. So that by the time we are getting to the 10 year, it doesn't get us by surprise. Mm. So th that's called, uh, th that would amount to proper financial management. When do we do it? Mm. We don't do it. We don't do it. Actually, what happens is that uh, when, we, when we near to repay the principal amount, then we start planning to obtain another loan of the same amount or more so that uh, we can refinance. <laughs> And now the worst case scenario, like when in 2014, when we were obtaining uh, that euro bond, mm. we obtained it at an interest uh, rate of about uh, 7%. Yeah. But uh, right now, the, our, uh, the euro bond value uh, has declined because of the adverse economic uh, um, situation uh, globally. Mm. And now it is trading at a yield of about 17%. Okay. So if we go back to the market right now mm. and we would wa we, we want to uh, to to roll out another euro bond then we would be required to 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 um to to settle for a 17% Kenya's biggest conversation is hosting Alex Kamau this morning Alex is an economic economics lecturer at the Cooperative University here in Nairobi he's also a business consultant we are talking about the effects of a sovereign debt default should we default should we not and if we then say we should avoid defaulting by hook or crook what should we do then just like you said alex the two billion is due next year plus other interest for other loans that we still have to pay mm -hmm. so we have a heavy heavy debt burden to pay in the next financial year what do we do how do we raise the money for it and if we don't default then what next you are discouraging anything from even thinking about defaulting okay so we should not get to a point where our loan payment is due and we don't have the money to pay because if we get there we default if we default 
issues happen we then don't have access to the market in terms of borrowing we can only go to this Bretton Woods institutions and the Bretton Woods institutions would come in and say you know what you need to first of all uh, get some manners and until I see that you have gotten some manners I'm not giving you money and the manners will include very many other things and pain there'll also be pain in terms of our inflation going up in terms of our currency devaluation and that affects very many things in terms of what we are then earning when we send money but there's a positive to it there our goods will be cheaper so they'll be more competitive in the in the export market <laughs> <laughs> if we were to avoid default yes. Tari, yes what should we do if we were to avoid default uh, one thing uh, what we can do is uh, to privatize the state-owned enterprises that uh, continue to 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 require bailout to by the government to 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 milk money out of us uh, to milk money out of us for instance uh, last was the end of last year mm. kq was uh, bailed out by the by the government and uh, so if we if we if we actually privatize uh, most of the government enterprises like we did uh, in 2000 between 2005 and 2010 and 2010 during kibaki's era you remember that is the time that uh, we privatized uh, safaricom that is the time we privatized uh, kq that is the time we privatized kenjen, uh, kenjen. Mm. that is the time we privatized uh, mumias because uh, I'm, 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 i want to list all those because uh, sometimes people think uh, as if uh, privatization is a bad thing but uh, if we, if we now do that and i can see the current uh, the current administration they are mm. doing their plan they they have they have planned to privatize a number of uh, state owned enterprises only that uh, they have started by changing the privatization act 2005 mm. Mm. and uh, they have mm. a pro they have proposed a privatization uh, bill uh, 2023 where they want to avoid going through the parliament whenever they want to sell the state owned enterprises mm. so because that process uh, is becoming a bit controversial mm. I, I would propose that uh, they still use the existing act uh, privatization act to go through parliament to go through parliament and then they sell uh, they, they they privatize something like uh, kenya ports authority uh, kenya pipeline corporation we have uh, chamil sugar muhoroni sugar miwani sugar even uh, imf it is said that uh, imf had also proposed some private universities mm. to be to some be public universities some public some public universities to be public uh, to be privatized, privatized. and uh, this could be a good thing because uh, it is in the public domain that uh, there are some lecturers who have not been paid for three to four, three to four years okay. for the work, for the services that they have rendered to public universities. Oh, oh, okay. Now, privatization. Yes. Again, the process of privatization, essentially yes. what that means yes. is taking away the reins of control yes. from public national yes. and giving it to the hands of one organization or entity that one would feel was specialized in operating. Yes. these things yes. and or just would, get private shareholders or, or right get people who would not essentially uh mm. allow, put their money into these organizations yes. mm. what would be the difference then in terms of output because of this either one private control yes excuse me or then private shareholders putting their money into what would be the difference in output when you say that something is privatized what then is the outcome that is different from when it was not for us to be able to understand this a little bit better uh being privatized uh, like it happened uh, in safaricom that uh, the government was the the government uh, was uh, was the was the major shareholder of the safaricom uh, shares before it was privatized and uh, listed in nairobi securities exchange mm -hmm. but uh, after that the we the, there was a listing and the prospectors were shared and uh, the general public were invited to buy safaricom shares mm -hmm. and uh, now that entity changes from uh, being government owned or controlled to an to a private enterprise mm -hmm. and uh, what that means is that uh, it is not controlled by the government in terms of appointments and uh, that company now have uh, a, a, a different corporate structure it has an advisory board and uh, everything that uh, including the recruitment uh, is done according to to the so it becomes to the, competitive the, in the market mm -hmm. yes and it's answerable to shareholders that are more than just government yeah, exactly like so now saying, kenjen mm -hmm. yes kenjen has to call an agm where everybody who has bought the kenjen share the nc yes have an, so we are saying See, essentially here yes. that they're indirectly saying yes. that government and government operations yes. and some of these things yes. actually is the problem mm. 
Yes, because because we have seen uh, government uh, has a lot of inefficiencies, and uh, the the, the, pub, the the private sector has in many in many cases uh, um, done better than the government. So uh, as we say even uh, today, the private the private uh, ran uh, private schools and, and universities. They, they they do better even in terms of if you go to primary schools or even secondary schools they perform better because there's accountability Be because there's accountability right. there's a transparency mm. so the way that um, st uh, uh, state owned enterprises uh, usually um, suffer losses because of a concept called the uh, moral hazard and moral hazard uh, says that uh, the doer of the action is not responsible for the consequences of his action mm. it's like mm. uh, it's like now hiring a, a driver to to drive your matatu and he will he will drive it uh, the way he wants because uh, if he's not the one responsible to take for the care of uh, to care of the repair cost mm. in case there is a police issue sometimes they they abandon the the car and they run away mm. Mm. so in the even in the government uh, situation we have seen cases whereby that uh, the officers who are running government uh, government enterprises mm. because of the moral hazard issue they feel even if they siphon money and resources from the entity mm. they will uh, still find a way to run away with it that's sorry I hear you and I hear, I even to an extent understand the case that is being made for privatization. Yes. But if you ask me, yes. it's also a scapegoat route. And what you don't do is that you don't deal with the issue. Because we're saying, all right, there's a problem here in a government run or state run entity. But rather than deal with what the problem is, let's just take that entity and give it to somebody else. That has not taken care of the problem. And shouldn't that be where the attention then is focused if we're looking for a solution? Whether it may be, because it, it will be long term. If you're trying to get rid of rot, it is not going to be a snap of the fingers, solution tomorrow kind of thing, right? It's going to take time. But for me, these are diversionary tactics. For me also, another element of control, because what you do is you also find that in privately run institutions, the flow of capital is much more than there is... <laughs> in government much more and there's also the element of control that comes in with privatization somebody's still bound to benefit right but all you're doing is you're taking this monster from this point and you're moving it to this point just because there's a level of accountability how can you fix the problem and that's the thing you won't privatize everything mm. and there are countries who have shown us that you can actually have state-run publicly run organizations and entities that work because they're bold enough to deal with the issue of impunity and corruption should that not be the issue here that we handle yes that that, that should be the issue as well that should be the issue as well and that's where we started the conversation with the issue of corruption because uh, we have had the the, the issue of golden bag scandal, scandal we had the grand regency scandal we had now the chicken gate scandal corruption is a, is a key issue but uh, when when the enterprise is uh, privatized and uh, because we don't hear those corruption cases in private sector we have not had a corruption case in a place like uh, safaricom and uh, financial you've institutions you've not heard i think no he's put it well, you, well. you haven't heard mm. but it's easier to deal with mm. As, I, I can see the way out because like Ndu, you're asking how do you not deal with it remember there's a whole monster here called politics if you start making moves at a state enterprise today you will be accused of oh weeding out a certain tribe or oh, doing this and the other it becomes private the board makes a decision mm -hmm. the board acts the management follows that's it if it's about firing a senior um, some manager who's just been bombing and coming to work at 10 and living at three he goes in a state enterprise, oh, you know, he's a permanent and pensionable. They'll, they'll transfer oh, you. Oh, you know, this mm -hmm. and the other. You mm -hmm. cannot deal with us, somebody who's just not working. It's a, it's a change. But that's one of the solutions that you're proposing yes. for us to avoid yes. getting into a state yes. of default. Yes. What's the other? Privatization yes. is one. What's yes. next? And, and the other advantage of privatization, Eric, mm. is that uh, we are widening and deepening our, our Nairobi Securities Exchange because uh, 
for the, for for the last uh, five years, we have not seen any new IPO mm -hmm. being rolled out at at, uh, at NSC. But uh, during the Kibaki's time, actually, the NSC was very vibrant because that's when uh, the, the privatization took place uh, of many state-owned uh, uh, organizations. Mm -hmm. So it is a good thing because uh, what we are doing is we'll be developing our NSC. Even right now, we are, the reason we borrow so much uh, externally is because uh, our debt market is not uh, well developed here. In Kenya. For instance, uh, recently the government uh, wanted to borrow 50 billion, but it was unable to raise uh, that amount of money. Mm. So what we need to do is uh, to 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 ensure that we develop our own our capital, uh, markets. Our capital markets, our capital markets. Mm. So privatization uh, is one. Number two is to ensure that uh, we enhance revenue collections in, uh, in, uh, here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can see KRA is doing very well mm -hmm. because uh, it is uh, automating uh, uh, revenue collection processes, whereby in the next, it, it is in the process of uh, integrating integrating uh, the systems of telecommunication companies with uh, their own systems at KRA. And that will be able to weed out those uh, tax cheats, people who evade taxes. They will be brought to book. And uh, using those strategies, uh, uh, we are likely to see our revenue collections move from uh, 2 trillion to about 3 trillion. Well, but then, Dr. <coughs> <coughs> the discussion of around the efficiency of KRA in collecting taxes. Yes. Yes, what you say is absolutely true. Yes. We saw it when Waweru was there. Yes. Mm. Then we saw the dip when was it in who came in. Yes, yes. Then we saw Mburu come in. Yes. And we saw it going up again. Yes. yes. Uh, that we get, but yes. what about ensuring that there is actually more to collect? Mm. Because you are seeking to collect more from an existing structure, yes. an existing population, yes. existing businesses, existing mm. everything. Mm. Mm. But the discussion about expanding this yes. space. Yes. You hear it mentioned every once in a while, and yet that is what would guarantee that the three trillion I'm talking about we can actually reach. Yes. Now, you know as well as we do yes. that this discussion about increasing taxes that IMF is suggesting. Yes. There are countries where it has had the complete opposite effect. You hike the taxes, you collect less. That, 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 that's for sure. And uh, the, the, this allegation that uh, we, are, we are taxed more is, no, is not very correct because uh, Scandinavian countries uh, in terms of uh, tax revenue to GDP is uh, 46%, but uh, here in Kenya it is 17%. Mm. So actually what uh, we, we, we are doing is there's still the same issue of uh, corruption that uh, people, because uh, the money is not properly utilized, their revenue, the taxes, they are not willing to fund the government. But uh, if the, we can deal with the issue of corruption, then we can st start seeing uh, people but more willing. Me, I want you to explain to me, yes. how do you arrive at this 17%? What, what arithmetic do you do? Where are the 17% that you just mentioned? Ah, very well. 17%, we say it is a tax revenue to GDP ratio. Mm. So the tax revenue that we collected uh, last year mm. is about uh, 2 trillion. Yep. And the GDP of the country well, by that time last year, by the, that first December 2022, was uh, uh, 14 trillion. Mm. So if, if you say 2 trillion divided by 14 trillion times 100 percent it comes to 17 percent <laughs> so essentially if we were scandinavian country and it was yes. 46 mm. yes the amount that we've collected yes you need to apply it multiply it by something like three to be able to to get to that level isn't it mm. yes and in simple terms a uh, city is that uh, for every hundred shillings that uh, a citizen of denmark or a scandinavian country earns he gives back to the government uh, for 46 shillings and what does but then if you also look at what happens also a citizen of denmark their children will not pay a cent they will not pay a cent of fees yes. until their children turn 18. Yes, yes. Yes. nobody has to beg government to fix a pothole in the road yes. never one day will they open the tap and yes. water doesn't run out of it yes. never one day will the power go out yes. never one day mm. will they go to hospital and not get the services of medical goods that they require okay. never one day Exactly, do, and that's why we need to shift the conversation from uh, saying that we are highly taxed mm. to that to the to saying that uh, we need to increase the government efficiency and effectiveness in delivery of uh, services to uh, to Mwananchi. And we also need to put corruption uh, under control. Like uh, in Denmark, it is under control 100%. Dr. Ari, yes. we are overly taxed. Yes. Okay? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a simple fact. You yes. see, if the very services with what we have 
and which are supposed to be provided for by the government isn't provided for, we end up paying for it, don't we? Yes. Money which we need not have paid. That's for sure. So if you do the maths, yes. we may find that we are almost on par with the Denmark, that for every sh hundred shillings that a Kenyan gets, where, where the money goes. Yes, exactly. B -b 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 because the truth of the matter is, yes. even as we have this discussion about what the government ought to do and what they have, we never have any guarantee or an honest discussion about this little money that they have, even let's put it at 10%, whether it actually goes to what they say it's supposed to go to. Because if it did, mm. then we would witness the changes. But we don't because it doesn't. Our issue is not... A revenue collection issue. Mm -mm. No, it is an expenditure issue. Okay. An expenditure issue. That's the two trillion doing. shillings that yes. was collected. Yes. How has it been utilized? But they collected mm. the two point four trillion yeah. shillings yes. that's been collected. Now their target is two point eight trillion shillings. How is it being utilized? Even if you're using it to, you know, use that and say this is my guarantee that I can, if I come and borrow, I can pay. You can see. How are you utilizing the money that you've borrowed? The six trillion shillings that was borrowed between 2014 and 2022, where how has it been utilized? Mm. I think that's those are the issues. Those are the issues, and here I, I, because 17 percent is not. We are actually no. at 17 percent. It's fine, but that 17 percent is it a 17? Is it commensurate value? It's an accountability issue here. Over the weekend, people were shouting, making noise because the Home Secretary they had a speeding ticket. Can you imagine mm. that she has to come before Parliament and start to explain herself how, oh, she was actually over speeding and she's very, very sorry. Who's that? In the UK. Home Secretary of the UK. And that, oh, please, can you imagine? Mm. The whole mm. country has got its knickers in a twist because she had a speeding ticket. Yes, <laughs> oh. yes. Wow. Yeah? Well, um, well, Until well, the point well. where people are even saying, what do you mean? Mm. Public figure, you should even resign. Mm. So now mm. here we are saying mm. that trillions of shillings are yes. unaccounted for mm. and that there are individuals in different departments who are responsible mm. for the expenditure. That trillions of shillings are con collected by an authority and people don't even know exactly where this money went. You know, somebody had a speeding ticket. You and see, the whole country is shouting as if... Things they, are about to they, go to hell. They, mm. they have. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's a systemic an, issue. An accountability and an, an accountability culture. Yes. Where it is understood, you're a public servant. You're accountable. If you're not, mm. it, it's clear. Yes. Ours, we look for every way, every which way to find an excuse for it, to explain it. This privatization, mm. we talk about it. Essentially, it's fundraising. That's for sure. That's for sure. <laughs> you see? No, no, it is yeah. fundraising because yeah. when you privatize, you are selling. When you sell people buy, you get money. Yeah. Okay? So you have more money than you had before, mm. isn't it? That's for sure. Uh, precisely. Now, when we've done that, and you correctly put it, we've seen institutions thrive. Like Kenya always thrived. Mm. It thrived. We, we actually saw it. There's a guy called Brian Davis. I still remember the name mm. because I still remember what happened to KQ. Then we get something called the Mawingu Project. And God Almighty, things went so south. South even stopped being south. And suddenly Kenya was just can't seem to get out of whatever situation that it's in. And if you observe, the blame falls squarely on the leadership in government at that particular point. So, even as we have these delightful discussions... And as we have Kenyans rallying from the diaspora to keep sending us money, okay? And it's not in shillings, it's in foreign exchange, okay? That comes in. They really rally. It's our major, 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 major source of foreign exchange. The same question of expenditure still comes in. Where does our money actually go to? Very good question. And uh, the former president answered that question very well. Two billion per day. He didn't tell us where it goes. He didn't tell us where it goes. No, he didn't tell us. He just uh, tells us, told us two billion gets And lost. by the way, yes. ethics and anti-corruption did their own maths. They came mm. up with two point seven billion per day. Two point seven billion yes, per yes, day. Yeah, just extrapolating from what the auditor general had been uh, pointing out. A third of our budget basically is 
eaten by corruption yes and actually to be fair to the current government because mm. uh, it has inherited uh, it has the the the, the huge debts mm. Mm. it has that, uh, out of uh, 1.8 trillion that uh, so far we 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 we, we, we are foreseen that we will collect for the year 2022 2023 mm. about 1.4 trillion uh, will go to debt servicing so we are only left with about uh, 400 billion to to pay our salaries uh, to pay the civil servants the recurrent expenditure and also the capital expenditure whose total bill is a trillion yes so the best uh, thing would be to <laughs> to restructure to restructure our debt and also to refinance our debt because uh, what happens is that uh, mm. When, and, and the government is trying and the government is trying to to do that because uh, it is trying to to prolong and extend the repayment period the maturity of the debts that uh, we borrow either locally or externally or internationally, or internationally. let's see if they succeed daktari yes. thank you for joining us today you'll come again soon